Well, hello from Cambridge. Hello from the Cambridge Institute of Marketing Practice and welcome to The Swamp. A short health warning. If you are not a board member, you may not find this short video particularly compelling. It is targeted to interest one very specific audience, company directors. Of course, any senior line manager could find interest here, but it is directors who are likely to derive benefit from joining us on a short journey through The Swamp. Swamp is strictly for the boardroom. There's a good reason for this focus on the board. Swamp is all about making investors happy, and it's in the boardroom that we make the big decisions, which touch on the fortune of investors, those fickle souls on whom we all depend to grease the wheels of commerce and reward us for our efforts to make them rich. So it is to the boardroom I seek an invitation. I am after a seat on the board. You can, of course, relax. It's not for me. I'm too old, I don't tick any diversity boxes, I'm not woke, my CV is threadbare, I don't even look the part, which is why I actually enjoy wearing a mask during lockdown. The invitation is not for me. And the seat is not for a friend and not for a relative either. But I do want a seat at the boardroom table. I want it for SWAMP. Well, not literally, or physically of course. SWAMP is an acronym. Acronyms don't go through doors, don't sit at tables, acronyms don't vote, don't sign off on accounts and chat up analysts. They certainly don't claim expenses or compensation. But on a more serious note, in spirit, yes, Swamp does deserve a place in the decision-making process. Swamp should be where profits take centre stage. Swamp deserves a seat in your boardroom. Give me a few minutes of your time and I will try to expose an opportunity you may have overlooked. You won't regret it. The journey is entirely free. The opportunity is hidden in plain sight and will seem blindingly obvious once exposed to view. So I don't deserve a fee and I'm way past my consultant's sell-by date, as you can see. So rest easy, I'm not after your money. Just five minutes of your time and undivided attention. So what is SWAMP? An acronym of course, we've said that. You'll find out what the letters stand for in the second and final video. Yes, there are only two. But Swamp is first and foremost a matrix. It is its role as a matrix we'll explore in this first short video. Matrix is a busy word, many meanings, many contexts, certainly more than a fairly eccentric movie, which I confess I have seen several times. A matrix, says Collins, is an environment in which something develops and grows. A matrix may be anatomical, biological, mathematical, organizational even, but in commerce a matrix is something else. In every business and in every marketplace it is where brands can develop. Brands like Lotto, IBM, Ariel, Coca-Cola, Google, Android, Barclays, McDonald's, Apple, etc. All grown in a brand's matrix. Okay, what's all this brand stuff, you may ask? Not my bag. Marketing stuff. Kick it downstairs to the marketing team. Well, I would suggest you briefly hold back from kicking anything or anyone and revisit your brands. They are definitely worth it. In a brand's matrix, money grows. Every brand matrix exists only to nourish a money tree for its investors and shareholders. And that is precisely what the swamp matrix is for. The swamp matrix is for growing brands and growing money. Money for investors, money for shareholders. The fruit of this money tree will, when harvested, all fall into the basket of shareholders. And money, ladies and gentlemen of the board, is the stuff that makes shareholders smile. Swamp isn't anything new, not something I dreamed up digging potatoes on the allotment. Yes, yes, I do have an allotment. I do have potatoes. I do dream, and I do dream of brands. But I didn't invent the brands matrix. That happened elsewhere. The brands matrix is a human construct from a distant land. It came into existence 184 years ago, right here by the river, in Cincinnati, Ohio, home to the National Football League Bengals, home to the Cincinnati Reds, the first ever professional baseball team, known as the Queen City and, less flatteringly, as Porkopolis. In 1837, Cincinnati hosted a small store startup named after its two founders, two young candle makers who married the Norris sisters, thereby becoming, first of all, brothers-in-law and then partners in the brand new Procter & Gamble Company. 
P&G have moved offices since 1837, not far. The Twin Towers, known not always affectionately as the Bunker, still sit by the Ohio River. But Procter & Gamble has expanded. By 2020, P&G global sales had grown to $70 billion, and the brands nurtured in the Procter Matrix, by some estimates, are worth some $300 billion. That's market cap, less tangible assets, so a bit optimistic, but they are certainly worth a lot of cash. The secrets of the P&G matrix are not obvious to outsiders, but they are well understood on the inside. Believe me, I have been there. P&G brands are managed as discrete competing business units. P&G brands are accounted as profit centers. In P&G, each brand has precise financial objectives and strategies to achieve its goals. And most important of all, each P&G brand is assigned a dedicated brand manager, has been since 1931. Within this simple matrix, P&G has been growing brand sales, profits, and growing brand cash value, BCV, for a long, long time, and all for generations of shareholders. BCV, or brand cash value, can be pretty impressive. P&G themselves sold Pringles in 2012 to Kellogg's for some $3 billion. Duracell in 2014 to Warren Buffett for about the same. And their beauty brands, Max Factor and CoverGirl, with a few extras, fixed a cool $13 billion from Coty in 2015. Not for sale right now, as far as I know. Coca-Cola is estimated at $70 billion BCV, and Apple $185 billion, Google $142 billion. And that is the Swamp Takeaway. Swamp 2 grows brand sales and profits. Swamp 2 grows brand cash value. And the BCV all belongs to shareholders. They own the company's assets. They own the brands. So maybe I can tempt you to consider that request for an invitation after all. Bring Swamp on board. Give Swamp a seat at the boardroom table. Give it a shot at making investors and shareholders smile. Of course, a money tree doesn't grow spontaneously. To grow the money tree, we have to make things happen. We need tools and know how to use them. Come back and join me in part two as Swamp morphs from matrix to toolbox, shapes profitable brands and brings a smile to investors often stony faces.